Recently, I had a charging system problem on my 05 Ford F350. Now, if you don't make your electrical tests correctly, you may just end up replacing a component that didn't need to be replaced. In this case, the alternator. Hi, I'm Pete Meyer, and this is Cardone ProTech. The Cardone ProTech series is produced in partnership with MotorAge, America's oldest trade publication for the automotive professional. The very first thing you should do if you suspect an electrical problem is to verify the condition of the battery. After all, if the battery is no good, then the rest of the electrical system can't function properly. You might want to also do that if you're dealing with any kind of drivability problem or a weird issue with any of the computer systems on the vehicle as well. And I start with a very simple test. I'm going to use my multimeter and put it in the voltage, DC voltage range. And then I'm going to connect it to the battery. Negative to negative, positive to positive. As you can see, we're getting a reading of 12.71 volts. And if you haven't heard me reference this in an earlier video, then let me just say this once again for you. Yes, that's how we always refer to our test leads, isn't it? Black negative, red positive. Well, I want you to think of this a little differently going forward. After all, what we're reading is the difference in potential between those two meter leads when we measure voltage. So I want you to think of the black lead as your reference lead. In this case, it's the zero point that we're basing our measurements against. The red lead is then our measurement lead. Now, wait a minute, Pete. You said that negative to positive. That's the way electrons move. And yeah, I did. In fact, that's what we know today. But back in the day, in fact, Benjamin Franklin, to be quite frank, was the guy that said they go from positive to negative. And even today, all the tools that you own, or that you use for voltage measurements are based around that concept, positive to negative. Let me demonstrate that to you. First, we're gonna take our black lead, our reference lead, to battery negative. And then we're gonna take our red lead, our measurement lead, to battery positive. Here we're reading 12.87 volts. That's 12 volts, 870 millivolts. But notice the number is positive. That's because the zero, the negative battery post is zero potential. The positive battery post has 12.87 volts of, of, of potential energy. And that's why you see it this way. And the reason you see it this way is because the tool is built around positive to negative, uh, the positive to negative theory. In fact, when we talk about electrical theory, it's often referenced to the positively charged particle, a proton, when we know it's the other way around. And we can show that. Again, we'll just reverse the leads and see what happens. Since we're measuring potential between the leads, it really doesn't matter. And here we have the same number, but notice now it's a negative sign. Now you're going to hear guys just go off in different directions when it comes to negative to positive, positive to negative. You know what? I don't want you worrying about any of that because in the end, it doesn't matter as long as you understand that voltage is not static. It's a measurement of potential energy difference between the two points. And when you think that it takes some of that energy to get past the various resistances in the circuit, that is gonna help you find problems. That is what we mean when we talk about voltage drop. It's energy loss across a resistance. Some is normal, some is not. And when it's not, that's what causes you problems and brings your customer in for service. A reading of 12.71 volts is a good reading, considering that a fully charged conventional flooded battery like the ones installed on this vehicle are fully charged somewhere between 12.6 and 12.8 volts. So, so far, so good. Now I wanna check the charging system output voltage and the loaded voltage rating of the battery itself once that biggest load of all, the starter motor, is applied to the battery's capacity. And I'm going to do that very simply. I'm going to select the min-max function on my tool, or a record function maybe on your tool, 
And now I'm going to go ahead and start the engine, shut it down, and see what our meter has to tell us then. So after I shut the engine down and come back to the meter, I'm going to press the min-max button to get the maximum reading. And you can see that is only 12.71 volts. Isn't that what we started with? Good charging output voltage should be at least 13.5 to 14.5 volts. Now let's take a look at the minimum voltage recording. We'll just press the min-max button again. And here we have 10.74 volts. Now, that is also a good number. Loaded voltage should not drop below 9.5, 9.6. So we're well above that limit. So in this case, the battery appears to be just fine, but it's not getting uh, replenished what's been taken out of it. So there's something going on with the charging system. Now, a lot of technicians would make a mistake here and automatically condemn the alternator. But there's a few more tests you need to make before you replace what can be a very expensive component. The step that's often overlooked is to actually verify whether or not the alternator is putting out any kind of voltage. So we're going to test that next. Now before we do, I just want to go again and say some things that, that we've said here before, but it's very important that you understand. When we measure voltage, we're not measuring a static something. It's not something I can put on a shelf and put in the vehicle when it gets low. It's a measure of potential energy, and it's the difference between the two points that I measure them at. And that's why I say again, I want you to consider this lead as your reference lead, and this lead as your measurement lead. So whatever I have in between these two points, that's the potential energy, the voltage, that I have available to me. And it's very helpful in understanding that so you can apply that, as you'll see, to your diagnostic troubleshooting. Now, let's go and see whether the alternator is actually putting anything out. We're going to do that very simply by, again, putting our reference lead to our zero potential at the negative battery post. And then I'm going to take the positive, the, the measurement lead, and I'm going to put that, the B plus terminal, on the alternator. Now let's start the vehicle once again and see what we got. As you can see, the meter reading with the engine running is showing 13.95 volts. So the alternator is putting a voltage out, but it's not getting to the battery. So there must be a problem with some kind of excessive resistance between those two points. Let's see if we can determine what it is by measuring the voltage between the two points. Again, what's the potential energy difference? If everything was working the way it should, there should be very little to no potential energy difference between the two points. All we need to do to measure that is move my negative meter lead to the positive battery post. Let's see what that reads. When I have my reference lead now moved to the positive battery post, and my measurement lead still at the B plus terminal of the alternator. Now I'm measuring the difference between those two points. Well, isn't the positive battery post, isn't that our high, the 12.71 volt potential that we measured earlier? So now I'm measuring the difference between that point and my measurement point at the alternator. Remember, that was about 13.96 volts, wasn't it? So that was quite a bit of difference. Well, right at this very moment measuring, I'm reading a high of 3.21 volts, which means there's a substantial amount of energy difference between the two. And the only reason there, that can be is that there's some bad connection, extra resistance that's requiring that potential energy in order to let the electrons get past it and back to the battery. So what we need to do now is find out where that lies. And what we do is we start moving back towards the battery until our meter reading returns to normal. The first stop is going to be right here at the crimp. Not too bad. You do a little wiggle test to see that it is moving. So that can indicate a problem. So let's keep going. Now we're going to come to the little post here as part of the battery cable connection. We're going to get a steady fix on that. 
Okay, now we're down to zero. So somewhere between this point and this point has to be the issue. That can only be the connection here. And as you can see, guess what? It is really, really, really loose. Let's see what happens after we get that connector tightened back up again. So now with that connection tightened up, we're going to once again measure our potential between those two points. I'm going to go back to the B+. Plus and see what our meter reading is. Still a little bit, about 0.1. Not too concerned about that compared to the higher numbers that we saw earlier. Last step, let's connect back to the battery and see what the charging voltage looks like now. Again, I'm going to take my reference lead, the negative post of the battery, my measurement lead to the positive post of the battery, and now we're reading 13.79 volts. That is right where it should be, and that is all it took to fix this vehicle. No battery needed, no alternator needed, just a few turns on a loose nut to make the connection tight the way it's supposed to be. I'd like to take a few minutes to review what we just did because I think it's vitally important to your success diagnosing electrical issues for you to fully understand not only the mechanics of what we did, but what these tests were telling us as professional troubleshooters. Now, the very first thing we did was look at the open circuit voltage in the battery. We want to make sure the battery is in good shape. If it's not, well, that can make everything on the vehicle run a little differently. We got 12.7 something volts, which means that the battery itself, its open circuit voltage is indicating a fully charged battery. Then when we perform that real quick down and dirty charging system loaded voltage test, we quickly saw that the charging voltage was nowhere near where it needed to be, but the loaded voltage indicated again that the battery was in fine shape. Now it's at this point, unfortunately, that many techs would have gone ahead, okay, got to be the alternator and would have replaced the alternator. But the best thing to do next is see whether or not there's anything coming from the alternator. That's when we moved our meter lead to the B plus from the positive battery post. Now, remember what we call those leads? Black is your reference and zero potential. Red is our measurement. So when we moved it to the B plus terminal, well, now we saw charging system voltage, didn't we? So that tells us as professional diagnosticians that the problem must lie between the B plus and the positive battery post. Why? Because the 12.7 that we had here indicates the voltage potential at this point in the circuit and the 13.9 that we had here indicates the voltage potential at that portion of the circuit. The difference between those two points is roughly two volts and some change, isn't it? Well, there shouldn't be any potential difference there, should there? Because there should be only the resistance of the cable to use the energy that we have to, uh, available to us. Now, I want to make sure I make that very, very clear. Everything in the circuit has resistance, correct? We've learned that in past videos. But if there's something there that, and, and what is, I guess I should back up very quickly. If there's resistance, it's going to take energy voltage to overcome that resistance to let the electrons move on through. If there's more resistance than expected, it's going to take more energy than expected. So two volts and some change difference indicates that there's a lot of extra resistance in which have, uh, into a component, the cable, that should have very little to begin with. Now, how can we isolate it? Well, now we're going to change our, our reference points. Now we know where the problem is. We're going to move our reference lead to the positive battery, and we're going to move our, uh, leave our measurement lead at the B+. Once again, with the engine running and charging system functioning, we can see that we had as high as 3.2 volts of, of difference between those two points. And as we've been discussing, there should be very little, if any, difference between those two points. So seeing that potential energy difference between the two is an indicator that the electrons are having a hard time getting through there. There's some form of resistance between those two points 
that's, that's robbing the, the battery from the full charging system voltage it should be getting. So how do we find that? We start moving back towards the battery with our measurement lead until we get back to a more normal reading. So we first came to the crimp on cable end. Of course, there's a, a one on either end of the cable. Uh, and then from there to the stud at the battery post that connects the, the cable to the battery uh, terminal connector. And that's where we saw the change between that cable end and between that terminal uh, stud. And what we found was pretty simple. There's nothing more than a loose cable, a loose nut that was allowing the cable to have an, in, uh, um, an incomplete connection uh, at the battery. And of course, that's what created that voltage drop. And that's what I wanted to, again, point out to you. Resistance doesn't always have to be something you can physically see, like corrosion or, or a burnt connector. Sometimes it's as simple as something as a loose connector, or in this case, a loose connection of the cable to the battery. A few turns of the wrench and our charging system was right back where it should be and our battery is happy running at that 13.7, 13.8 volt charging rate. So as you can see, it can be a little simple process, but unless you understand what that meter is trying to tell you in your measurements, it's not gonna help. You've got to learn the language of the meter and I encourage you to go back to some of the videos that we've done in the past covering this topic and look them over, try them for yourself until you become comfortable in the testing method. You will find a world of difference once you do. So I hope something uh, took away from today. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.